Merry Christmas, it should give you comfort that whatever God has said concerning you will come to pass. And we establish that from the scriptures because Jesus Christ had been prophesied to come right from the foundation of the earth. So when you hear Merry Christmas, don't look at your present circumstance. Look at God's word concerning you. So today what we are going to be talking about in these few minutes is rekindling hope. When you are comforted, it's not meant to make you complacent. It's to also give you hope. Remember? Ecclesiastes 9 chapter 4. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. So Christmas season is also an opportunity to rekindle hope. To get hope back on track. To get you back to that place where you say, okay, my parents could have been poor. I may not have gone to school. Or business may not have been good or as it ought to be. What does Christmas have to say? Outside of rice and stew and chicken, what has it got to say? Outside of feeling bad and feeling terrible that, oh, another year has gone, what has it got to say? And you see, I keep telling people, if someone tells you don't worry, it's an incomplete statement because it must give you a reason why I shouldn't worry. It must give you a reason why I shouldn't worry. I can see this in my life. I can see this here. I, and you are saying, no, it's not complete. Motivational ministers or preachers, sorry, or, 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 or speakers can give you a lot of motivational stuff. It's good. But what is the basis for it? And that's why you give me reasons that I can work on this reason. So tonight, I'm going to give you reasons to rekindle hope. Wherever hope has been dashed, I will show you from the scriptures and it will not be long. I was cracking a joke with Pastor that I preached so long on Carol Night. You guys are so happy. Short message. <laughs> I said, I was so sure that I'm sure if they pass a hat around to give me an offering, that would be the highest offering I will get. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, it was just a joke. We're all tired, you know. Just three minutes, four minutes. But today will not be three, four minutes, but I promise you, I will work within time. You haven't given me the time, please. Amen. So let us remember some, Psalm 137. Let's remember that as a basis before we go to rekindling hope, looking at Christmas. Psalm 137 from verse 1. We read from verse 1 to 4, verse 1 to 6. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Listen to me. They keep it there on the screen. There was weeping because they were in Babylon in the wrong place. They were weeping because they were not where they were supposed to be. If you have a spark of grace upon your life, when things are not working, you will know, true or false, you will know that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I was telling pastor that I, I need a break. I need about three weeks off. I need about three weeks. I need to just be able to be somewhere. Uh, you can take it. You can send me a ticket. I'll go. Hallelujah. I don't do a vacation in Nigeria. I have, a, I have a spot in U.S. where I go. That's just by the way. When you are at the river of Babylon, when you remember Zion, you will weep. Except, of course, if you have never been in Zion. Many people have been to church. They haven't been in Zion. And if you don't know what you have, when you lose it, you won't miss it. If you don't know the value of what you possess, when it's gone, you wouldn't miss it. But if you know the value of what you have, when it's not there, you know I miss something. And it's one of the reasons why I keep asking, I keep appealing to you, when you come to church, please focus on church. Because when something is not taking place in your life, you will not know. Except you have tasted it. Hallelujah. So when they remembered Zion, was when they began to weep because they now began to compare. Look at what, where I am at. Look at what I used to be. Look at what I have tasted. You will taste great things in Jesus' name. Every person in this house uh, who have lost or who has lost certain level of excellence and perfection, accuracy with God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, not only will you get them back, you will go beyond in Jesus' name. We will go far. We will go farther. We will be stronger in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And look at what will make it very, very devastating and sad. Look at it. It's the verse 2. It makes it very sad. Why? Or can you give it to me, sir? Make it fast. It's gone.
Let me go back to my Bible. We hand our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. Verse 3. Hallelujah. For there, they that carried us away captive required us a song. And they that wasted us required us mirth. Mirth there is amusement. Amuse us. Saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. When you are in a rough and a bad place and you are unfortunate to be in Babylon, what you are going to see is what mockery. What you are seeing there is mockery. And I pray in the name of the Lord, all those that have mocked you, succumbed to have mocked you, is cut off, is destroyed tonight in Jesus' name. I know how painful it can be when you are supposed to be here, you are here. When you are supposed to be here, you are here. And those that have the privilege of knowing where you are supposed to be, the mockery. Oh, you are going to church now. Sing us one of those songs. Maybe you say the Lord has been good. Sing it. In the name of the Lord, you will sing again. I said you will sing again. You will rejoice again. I know that you have lost something, particularly those of you who knew what you have lost. God will restore. It will be bigger than this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Like the next verse, please. Verse 4 and verse 5, since we just closed. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Listen to me. When you come to church or when you are in the house and you find it difficult to praise and worship God, you don't need anybody to tell you you are in Babylon already. Believe me, you can see it. When you find, it's not that you are wicked. You are just you are just tired. The worship leader can beg you, jump, cry, lift your hand, jam your hand, explode your hand, explode your leg. It will not work. And it can be in your house, you wake up to pray. In time past, when you wake up, your feet hit the ground, you are blasting tongues. Now your feet hit the ground, you're carrying your phone. It's WhatsApp. What happened is you are in a strange land. May we return from strange lands in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember the prodigal son? He came to himself in a strange land and he said, I'm going back home. You will all come back home in Jesus' name. Amen. Home is not a physical place. You will come back to that presence of God. We'll come, I'm going to be there myself to the presence of God in Jesus' name. And look at that prayer that no matter how bad you have been, how long you are not be able to pray, let's see what they pray. The next verse, please. Look at what they said. If I forget thee, if I may be in a strange place, I may not be happy where I am, I may be going to parties, I shouldn't be caught there, whatever it is, but I will not forget you. And I will place a curse. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. The right hand is a place of strength. Your right hand is a place of excellence. He say, if I forget you, let excellence depart from me. Let strength depart from me. In the name of Jesus, you will not forget Jerusalem. That is what happens when you are far away, but your heart is in Jerusalem. Look at the next verse, and I'll close there for that session. He said, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. May the almighty God strengthen us in Jesus' name. What he's saying there, that let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. What he's saying, let praise go out from my mouth. Let me not be able to say nothing. Let me not be able to rejoice. Can you let us demonstrate that we are out of Babylon? Let's lift our hand and just talk to God and just, just speak to God. Can you, Lord, I will not, Jerusalem is the place of my peace. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my children. You gave them to me. Thank you for my job, my career. You gave them to me. Thank you for my company. Oh, you gave them to me. Thank you for my church. You give, thank you for my brethren. I will not forget you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Hebrews chapter 6. Rekindling hope. Hebrews 6, 17 to 19. Hebrews chapter 6. I realize that my introduction is a little bit longer than I thought I will have. So. We're in God. Please. Technology help me so that I will be able to culture this thing, okay? Where in God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise. How many heirs of promise are in this place? We are, thank you, Jesus. 
of probably the immutability of his cancer. You when you take your phone, you are on a Zoom link. They say mute your whatever, mute your speaker. He said it cannot be muted. The immutability of his cancer. God's word cannot be silenced. It will not be silenced in your life in Jesus' name, Amen. nor in my life or my children's life in Jesus' name. Satan can wage wars, but it will not be silenced. God Almighty will have the victory. He said, confirmed it by an oath. Verse 18, please. That by two immutable things, which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon what? To lay hold upon the hope that is said before us. All the things, the counsel of God, the words of God, all those things that God is saying, all the preaching, all the singing, the carol service, all your testimony time, the cakes, is so that God Almighty, can you give me the other verse? I haven't said gone on. That God Almighty can set before us to lay hold on the hope that is said before us. He said, who have fled for refuge. If you have not in Zion, the place of refuge, you can't lay hold on that hope. For those of us who have fled for refuge, the hands of God is a place of refuge. As it were, we are refugees in the hands of God. It is from that place you can lay hold on hope. And you see, when I read Psalm 137 for you, I must state it clearly. In the New Testament, Babylon is a spiritual place. In the Old Testament, Babylon was a physical place. So you can be in church actually here with me and be in Babylon. You can be sitting, you can be listening, and be in Babylon. Why? Because the forces that operate in Zion, you are insulated from them. You are cut off from them. So he said that when we flee for refuge, when a refugee does not dictate. Have you seen refugee camps before? IDP? They tell you what to do. You can't wake up in IDP and say, well, I want to build a house. There's nothing like that. This is what we're doing today. This is what we're eating. But the Bible says, for those of us who have slept for refuge can have hope. The next verse. The next verse. Which hope? This hope is important for it's an anchor of the soul. When a soul is not having hope, a soul drifts. And one of the effects of problems, disappointments, hurts over the weeks, over the days, over the months and years is to affect the stability of our soul. And the only thing that can make our soul stable is word hope. If you ever been to the beach or you see the boats on the beach or wherever, even small boats or canoes or big ship, there's only one thing that makes them stand still in a turbulent world and not drift away is what is called an anchor. They throw down the anchor. It's a massive, it depends on the size of the ship, but it will go down and it gets to a secure place. Regardless of what happens, it holds firm. For the believer, what will make you hold firm? When you have missed it, when you have stumbled, when you have disappointed people, when you have disappointed yourself, when you don't expect what will happen, happen you thought you would be here, you are not there. There's only one thing that can keep you stable in an unstable world is hope. The Bible calls it the anchor of the soul. Remember Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He let me beside the of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the path of the righteous of death, it was I shed for, for what? He, there's a portion that he restores my soul. Until your soul is restored, you are of no serious good. You may not be able to face the future with strength. So the hope is the anchor of the soul. And he said, which soul, we, we, both show and step us, which entered into that within the veil is sure and steadfast. So let's quickly look at an example because of time of how this hope, how Christmas can get this hope back to some of us. In some part of my life, I tell you the truth, I need to rekindle hope. I need to get back to that point. And for some of you, you are at that place, you are at that point. Some of you watching and listening to me, you are in that place. So let's look at an example and draw out inferences for Christmas, how you can rekindle hope and you can be where God wants you to be. Mark chapter 10. 
Mark chapter 10. I will read from verse 46. Mark chapter 10. I want us to be very careful because it's Christmas message this season, but I want to draw an inference, and you know we've been building the kindly hope and how it works. Verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with the disciples, and a great number of people blind, uh, of people blind by Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. We are going to stop there briefly. When you read verse 46 again, the very first line is coded with meaning. Verse 46, please. And they came to Jericho. Semico what's, the, what's the sign there? What do they call it? What's the sign in that scripture? Thank you very much. I almost said semicolon, but I know that there are English professors here. So it's better for them to make a mistake and I'll quote them. <laughs> and say it's not me. Look at what happened. And they came to Jericho. And as I went out of Jericho, what did he do there? He doesn't, it, it's a fleeting thing. The Christmas season, the Christmas day is just one day in 365 days. The season may just be five days. It's so fleeting, it's so fast, that if you are not careful, before you know what's happening, we're already in the new year. We're in the new year. It's such a short time. And this is what you saw here. And they came to Jericho and he went out of Jericho. What did he do in that place at that time? We have to understand what Jericho is. We have to understand and decode and deconstruct what Jericho is. Jericho, first of all, was not just a place where it's under city. Jericho has history. In the book of Joshua chapter 2, you can read it later, was the first city that was taken by Joshua. Jericho was a place of wealth. Jericho was a place of abundance. Jericho was not a casual place. And if you look at scriptures at different times, Jericho has been mentioned. Jericho is very close to Jordan. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jericho is the place of wealth. But next to Jericho is Jordan River that you cross it, you cross into peace. Jericho is not a place of casual relationship. It's a place of commerce. It's a place of abundance. So when he came to Jericho and he came out of Jericho, he came to a place where stuff happens, where negotiation for increase takes place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'll give you an example because of time. Remember 2 Kings chapter 2, when... Elijah was to be taken away. What did Elijah say? From Gilgal. Gilgal is a place of covenant, cutting. From Gilgal, he said, I'm going to Bethel. Bethel is the house of God. I'm not going to, you can't go with me. What did Elisha say? I'm going to go with you. And when they got to Bethel, Elijah said, well, God, I'm going to go to where? Jericho. We go from Bethel, the house of God. The next place you go is the way to act out what you receive in the house of God. That's Jericho. That's why you can't stay in Jericho. You, will, you can't stay in Bethel perpetually. Bethel is a place of worship. And he said, look, I'm going to Jericho. But he said he go to Jericho. What did Elijah say at that time? I'm going to where? Jordan. Stay here. The guy said, I'm going to go with you. And what did he do? He took out his mantle. It was in Jericho. He took out his mantle and struck the Jordan River because the Jordan River separated Jericho from Jordan. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when you read this scripture, and they came to Jericho, he went out of Jericho, you must know that there are some things to be learned in the action of Jesus Christ, which was revealed in blind Bartimaeus. Maybe I should not run too fast and go there, and I'll come back to this verse. Because if nothing happened in that fleeting second, blind Bartimaeus will not shout out and cry, and not say, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
He was very clear. And before I go to blind Bartimaeus, should I say this first? Mm, Holy Spirit, should I go this one or should I say this? I want you to be able to get a picture of how you will allow Christmas to give you that hope. Let me say this first. There are three personalities in Christmas season that we all read about. The first, the wise men. The second, the angels. The third, the shepherds. The three of them reacted in different ways that we can learn some things from them. In that fleeting moment, in that short moment, he came to Jericho, he came out of Jericho. Because of time, you know the story, I'll just refer to the angels for, let's like say the wise men. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, verse 7, verse 10 to 11. Matthew chapter 1, quickly because of time. What was the reaction of the wise men? When they heard that Christmas was imminent, Matthew chapter 1, verse, um, verse 1. Is it Matthew chapter 1 now? I, don't, I didn't plan to. Matthew chapter 2. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from east to Jerusalem. The same thing, can you see the response? When the wise men saw Jesus and they knew that he had been born, about to be born, wherever it is, the Bible said they left where they were to do what? To go to Jerusalem. One of the things you will see here is that they changed location. They changed position. They went from, as it were, Babylon to Zion. In that fleeting moment, we can see that this wise men, they heard about it, they knew about it, they moved, they did something. And look at the error many people make, which we can learn from, because moving from one place to the other is good, but the one who began a good work will finish it. The Bible says by a prophet, Israel was saved, by a prophet, he will sustain it. Many people, they begin in the spirit, they end up in the flesh. And that was what Paul was saying to Galatians in Galatians 3. Oh, you foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you, who had cast a spell on you, before whom Christ was what? Crucified, evidently crucified. He said, you began in the spirit, will you be made perfect in the flesh? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And many of us are like that, and that's why fellowship is important, because it's easy for us to lose hope. It's easy for us to be distracted. These guys, what did they do? They began in the spirit. What did they do? Say, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his time in the east, and we have come to worship him. But where did they face? Instead of looking for Jesus, they went to the palace. When you see Christmas as clothes and shoes and cars, you are going to the palace. You are going to Herod. If you are following the star, you will follow the star. You will not follow your flesh. Are you catching what I'm saying? You may just have one pair of shoes or two pairs of shoes. That is not what defines you. And they went to look for Jesus Christ in the palace. And let's jump from to verse 7 because of time. The Herod, when he had previously called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Herod himself had no clue. When you go to the place of the flesh, believe me, you will receive no clue. When you are led by your flesh, believe me, nothing happens to you. You enter into marriage in the flesh, you will discover that it's not going to produce. You enter into any relationship with the intent to get advantage of it, you will discover it doesn't work. It may look good, the palace is beautiful, the king of the Jews is born, but you are looking at the king of the Jews in the flesh, where God was talking about the king of the Jews in the spirit. God says something about you, what he has said about you, he had the capacity to bring it to pass. Don't depend on the flesh. Your flesh can be your emotion, unstable emotion, and it's how I just feel about it. Your feeling will not deliver the blessing to you. It's God that will deliver it. Because you will soon discover all the beauty, all the cars, all the clothes, all the will not give you joy. Go and ask those who have moved house. They will be swearing. Hey, if I can just get that house. The landlord, they will beg the landlord. They will beg everybody. By the time they move there, within one week, they, it, it is gone. Because things cannot satisfy you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You can't even say amen. Just look around and say amen. Things cannot satisfy you. It is God that satisfies. Because you can see it, and we can learn in the Christmas. They didn't get anything quickly because of time. Let's run. 
And um, we've seen that they couldn't, he didn't know what happened. Let's jump to verse 10. Okay, let's jump to verse 9. When they heard the king, they departed. See, if you are not getting blessed at the level of consecration, leave the king alone. Leave Herod alone. When you are not, don't pretend you are happy. Don't pretend you are making it. Don't fake it until you make it. That's not scripture. If you know it's not working, that's why you step aside and pray and fast. That's why you step aside from some other stuff. If the Herod cannot help me, I will not keep on massaging my ego. If you don't have it, you don't have it. I just told her I need vacation, three weeks vacation. And the way you are looking at me, I'll make it four weeks. <laughs> the way, it's like you want me to be gone. I will be gone for four weeks. <laughs> If it's not working, move. So they moved, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in his ears went before them. You see, when you make up your mind, the blessing will come back. The joy will come back. The hope, I'm telling you the truth. The moment you make that right move, you may not see a physical thing, but deep down inside of your heart, you have sensed that I'm in the right place. I'm in the right track. Things are going to work out for me because God needs you to be in agreement with him. God cannot force you to do anything. It happens spiritually first before it happens naturally. He just, just, knew. They, they, when they step out, they start saying, now you are ready for me, I will show you. Hallelujah. Now you are ready for me, I will show you. Now you are ready for me, I will move. And the Bible says, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. There are three things quickly I summarize before I say the fourth thing about the wise men. The first thing, they changed location. When you hear the word of God, change location. And it's not a physical location. I was sharing with someone today. I said, God convicted me. I told the church and I've been practicing it. What are you writing down in your notes? Number two, are you reading your notes? The same thing you wrote with your hands. Do you go back to them? So number one, change location. Number two, don't follow your flesh. It may look good. Many people have gotten married and they have made bloody mistakes. Many have gone into a business relationship and made bloody mistakes because it looks good. They went to the palace instead of following the Holy Spirit. Number three, it, when you see that the horse is dead, come down from the horse. Disembark from the horse. Don't follow that which is not working. You will see the star did not say, oh, okay, now, since you missed it, I'm not going to lead you again. Is that what the star said? Your mistake, your errors are not big enough to stop God's purpose for your life. I didn't hear you say it loud, amen. amen. All of us are blown at different times, but it's not big enough to stop God's plan for your life. Uh, when you are ready for it, just like GPS, I will take you again. He will carry you again. He will move you again. He will take you to the next level in the name of Jesus Christ. And all you thought you lost, you are going to get back in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Let's now look at the fourth thing about the wise men before we depart and look at the angels. Remember where we are coming from. He went to Jericho and he came out. Just a little moment. What can we learn for Christmas? See what happened. All right, verse 11. Verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Verse 11. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures... They presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. See what happened there. Let me read the verse 12 because of time. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. When God revealed himself to you, it's not so that you can just uh, feel goose pimples. There is something he wants to achieve. What does he want to achieve? He wants to achieve he said, as long as I live, the whole earth will be covered with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Say, he has created all things for his pleasure. Anytime you meet with God, I beg of you. Anytime God meets with you or God answer your prayer, I appeal to you, worship him. Don't worship yourself. Don't worship your accomplishment. They got there. They did not begin to say, ah, <laughs> we've been on this journey for how many months? <laughs> oh boy, you try, oh. I hope the food has finished. He has not finished. No. They saw Mary carrying Jesus. They did not mistake Mary for the person they should worship. They worship a baby. When people go to church, they look at the pastor. The pastor is like Mary. He's carrying a baby. Worship the baby. The worship leader is like Mary. She's carrying a baby. 
is important in our heart because many of us in the church we have lost the art of worship. I was in the office, but I was part of what was going on. I was being a part of it. In worship. And what is worship? You give in worship. The Bible said they gave out of their treasures. Where did they get it from? Not in Jerusalem. They brought it from where they are coming from. When you are working with God from your house, check your heart. What am I going to give to God for my beautiful wife, for my handsome husband, for the victories we have gotten? You prepare your heart. Mary did not demand for an offering. They did it by themselves. And they gave it. And what is the immediate benefit of it? Whenever you give an offering, you receive a direction from heaven. God will not deny you direction. Look at the delivered direction. The angel appeared to them and said, don't go back the way you came. Don't go back the familiar way. Go another way. And by doing that, they secured the destiny of Jesus Christ. When you can hear God, when you have worshipped God with your seed, as a response by yourself, nobody forcing you, you secure divine direction in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we can see how hope can be rekindled. I didn't hear you say loud amen. amen. I didn't see how loud amen. amen. This is scripture, is not me. So in this fleeting Christmas season, ask yourself, am I following this star? What am I worshipping God with? Lord, what are you saying to me? Is that direction that will determine what business, what investment, what job, what career, who to marry, where to go, where to float, because he will direct you. He will say, oh, that boy, forget, he's yam head. You don't need him. That boy, leave him. That one is coming. He will, he will give you divine direction. You are a child of God. We are not supposed to be in limbo. Say amen, somebody. Amen. That's one. I, number two, let's talk about the angels. The angels and the shepherds. They are together. Luke chapter 2. When the angels were informed by heaven, what was their response? Hallelujah. I will not stay too long there because I'm going back to Jericho. It came out of Jericho so that we can uh, actualize and get all we need to get today. Luke chapter 2 verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were so afraid. The angel is under instruction. Angel has no will of their own. Are you with me? So you must read it in that context. We're just saying, what is the reaction? So this one, we can say that's how heaven wanted it. That was not their choice but we can learn from it. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I give you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Are you part of all people? Oh, you're not answering. Are you part of all people? We are part of all people. And what is he saying to you? Fear not. Can you look at your neighbor and say, Fear not? That is what he's saying in this season. When you hear Merry Christmas, ding dong, merrily on heart, he's saying what? Fear not, because that's what happened. See what he said. For unto you is born this day. That's why you shouldn't fear. That's why I told them, I said, don't worry. Without giving me reasons, it's a waste of time. It's not complete. For the reason why I said fear not, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. And he says so many things, and this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swanning clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a much of the heavenly host praising God and saying, so Whenever God sends you an assignment, you deliver them, God will send people to praise him, not to praise you. The Bible says, I think 2 Corinthians 3, 18, 2 Corinthians, someone said Corinthians. He said, the abundant grace upon your life might through the thanksgiving of many return unto the glory of God. When you do what you are doing and folks are not praising God, I suspect it. I suspect it. They may not say it out, but at the end of your impact with them, relationship with them, glory must go to God. The angels were doing what they praise God. Glory to God in the highest. Not glory to man. Not glory to the angel. Glory to God in the highest as so we can learn from there again that this Christmas season reminds us again to do what? To give God all the glory. We can learn that from the angels. Whatever you have gone through, whatever you are going through, the Bible said the angels began to praise you and say glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill towards all men. Hallelujah. 
Now, let's now see the reaction of the shepherds. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them unto heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. They recognized that God made known unto them. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Verse 17. And when they had seen it, they made known brought about the saying which was told them concerning this child. Verse 18. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. The shepherds dropped the ball. I hear what I'm saying. And this season, many people are like shepherds dropping the ball. The shepherd did not take a single goat or a lamb or a ram. They went to go and go see this great sight. When the almighty God shows you something, it's not for rumor's sake, it's for worship's sake. You can't fault it. Look at scriptures. For, uh, the wise men came from afar. They are not a resident of the area. And they by themselves, as you could see, divine direction. God gave them divine direction. After all this season, I'm praying next year will not be like last year for many people, but many people will still not have good report. Why? Because there is nothing flowing from them as an offering of worship to God. In their mindset, eh, if they ask for offering, we give offering. Nobody's asking for offering, not in this church. We make announcement that's the end. We let people know what the need of God's people is, but I, God is asking us to have a deeper work with him. A deeper work with him. The shepherd, you could see, when they finished, the only thing they got, people wondered. See, the people wondered, that's it, that is, they couldn't convince them. They are never sure there was no grace upon it. They just wondered what this thing was, and that's the end of the story. So let's go back quickly to Jericho. When that split moment, he came to Jericho and came out. When that split moment, some things happened to blind Bartimaeus. First of all, I believe in my heart, just like... Um, the wise man, he saw in that moment that Jesus was worthy to be worshipped. He saw in that moment that Jesus would give direction. He saw in that moment that Jesus was coming from somewhere, he's going somewhere, and he wanted to go with him. He needed the mercy of God. So let's quickly look at, let's go back to Mark 10 as we begin to wind up. What are those things you are supposed to see in this season, Christmas season? Beyond rice and stew and Christmas card and carol songs. Why did we celebrate it? The word Batimios, Ba Timios, Ba means son of Timios. Timios means honor. There are many sons of honor that are blind. Blindness in the New Testament is beyond physical blindness. Is not see the light of God. One of the greatest things that can happen to a man or a woman is the light of God. He said, their face were lightened and they were not ashamed. You will not be ashamed again in Jesus' name. The light of God will fall upon you like never before. Fall upon all of us in this house in Jesus' name. He was blind. He was a son of Timaeus and it became so bad Instead of calling him Bartimaeus, they call him blind Bartimaeus. His condition became his description. And there are people who, they have gone through so much stress in their life, they themselves have accepted their condition as their description. And if you know your Bible very well, I'm sure you do. When God had a encounter with Jacob, what did he tell him at the time in the book of Genesis chapter 35? He said, what's your name? He said, Jacob. Jacob means supplanter. Jacob means he cheat. And God said, no, you are no longer Jacob. You are what? Israel. As much as God said so, if you look at the Bible, many times they really refer to them as Jacob. Because Jacob is a man of the flesh. I'll give you an example quickly. You can search it out later. When he was about to die and they said his son was coming, they said they told Jacob that Joseph was by the door and Israel rose up from the bed. <laughs> Hallelujah. What responded was Israel, not Jacob. Because Jacob cannot bless. Only Israel can bless. Are you still with me? 
I hope you can handle what I'm giving to you tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he, being a son of honor, was blind. Now that you are blind means you are cut off from the word of God. Say your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That is a 119. Maybe verse 38 or something. It's a light. When you don't have the word of God, Christmas season gives us an opportunity to receive the light of God. We have been talking about the comfort of scripture, uh, Christmas, where you hear the song and you see our children sing carol and you see everybody happy, Merry Christmas, and you see people driving to their villages, to their hometown, people going to their families, people visiting families. That is what Christmas begins to do, but that's not what it ends with. What it ends with is you begin to ask yourself, oh, I can have the light of God's word. I can no longer be blind. Every one of us, we are blind in certain areas. Say, I can see Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. He has a future for me. He has a hope for me. He has an assignment for me. And you are enjoying yourself. You are rejoicing because what God said concerning him came to pass. What he said concerning me and concerning you will come to pass. Are you with me? Please, I beg of you, don't let this Christmas be just another one when you don't receive healing for your blind eyes. And look at what happened. The Bible says when he heard, the question is, can we ask God to open our ears? He was blind, but he was not deaf. There are things in our life that's working. Many people, they harp upon what is not working and neglect what is working. They talk about what they don't have. I don't have this. I don't have people. I don't have job. I don't have friends. I don't have a house. I don't have opportunity. I don't have a husband. I don't have a wife. What about what you have? God will not require from you what he has not given you. The wise men did not steal to bring the money. It's what God gave them. Freely they received, freely they gave. God will not force you. Many people, and that's one of the things why many church members in many congregations, they have a victim mentality. And it has also affected those who are not even poor, who are even learned. We have a collective victim mentality in the church. That's why our children could leave Nigeria and go and be sweeping floors and be abused by people because we have a victim mentality. We say, we don't have light in our country. We don't have roads in our country. We don't have this. What about what we have? There are many things we have. Blind Bartimaeus did not depend on his eyes, depended on his ears. And after his ears could hear, what did he do? He spoke with his mouth. You cannot see, but you can talk. You cannot see, but you can hear. You cannot see, but you can shout. If you allow yourself to keep talking about your blindness, your deafness will become very deaf. It will be deafening with time. And it will affect the words of your mouth. Jesus Christ said in the New Testament, I don't have time to go there. He said, take heed what you hear. He said, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. That is what he said when he was in, on earth. When he got to the book of Revelation, he added something to it. What did he hear to it? He that has ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. When he was here, he didn't say that. He only said that had an ear to hear, let him hear. Between the Word and the Spirit, you will have direction. So you must train your ears as they sing the song, Silent Night, they sang all those songs. Let it not just end there. What are you hearing? If you are hearing something good, you will discover that your healing, nobody can stop it. Nobody can fault it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It may take a while. He's been there for a long time, but he made up his mind that this thing cannot continue like this. And then he opened his mouth. He was not complaining about his eyes now. And said, these eyes, what he said to Jesus Christ was simple worship. Let's go there. He said, verse 4, and cried and said, Jesus Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I don't know how far it is true, but news, N-E-W-S, someone said it means notable events, weather, and sports. 
<laughs> That's what it means. It's a news. And I just took the first part, portion. Be responsible, responsive to notable events. When a notable event is happening, respond positively. When the apostles did a miracle in Acts chapter 3, chapter 4, the Bible says when they called the apostles, they recognized that a notable thing has happened in our midst. We cannot deny. What are the notable things happening in your environment? It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Verse 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried out the more, a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a stroll in the park. That you have a good idea doesn't mean that those who should support you will support you. In fact, they will find a way to block you. That is why, please, I beg of you in Jesus' name, once you have heard, once you have seen, please let your mouth speak it. Don't just wait for people. The Bible, somebody said, a thousand people cannot be wrong. They can be wrong. Ten thousand people can be wrong. The word of God is always right. Galileo Galilei, before he was killed, he said the earth is round. At that time, the church was very powerful, the Catholic church. They said the earth was flat. And they said, look, 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 at that time, if we said anything contrary to the church, not the Bible, what they agreed, you are gone for. And they told him that, look, you have to recount. If you recount and say, oh, the Pope is right, the earth is flat, it's okay. He said he will recount. They dug him to the stake. Say, can you now say that publicly that the earth is flat? You know what he said? But the earth is round. <laughs> Hallelujah. That the, I can't but say it's round. If you have not seen anything, you are a jellyfish. If you know Jesus Christ, you know he's not counting your sins against you. All the, the boys there, the blind Bartimaeus said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He said, No. I don't have to give you two, three, four, five steps or what I did yesterday, last night. To, you know, he just have mercy on me. Are you catching what I'm saying? Your future is bright in Jesus' name. Don't let, there will be people, they will tell you it's not going to work. The whole much of people, they ask him to shut up. What did he do? He cried out the more. I may not be able to see, but I have ears, I have mouth, I will use what I have. Tell your neighbor, use what you have. Oh, you're not saying very well. Say, use what you have. You will succeed. You may not be able to play well, you're able to fight. Muhammad Ali could not play football, but he could fight. Use what you have. No, God has not made any of us bereft of gifts. Sometimes you stumble into it by mistake. Talking about Muhammad Ali. How did he begin the fight? They went, to, he went with his brother to, for, for an event. He went with a new bicycle his father just gave him. He parked the bicycle outside and went in. By the time he came out, they have stolen the bicycle. He was just 17 years old. He was so angry, he was so upset. They told him there's a policeman around, he could go and meet the policeman. And when he got there, he told the policeman, if I catch the person that took my bike, I'm going to fight him. I'm going to beat him. The policeman said, you can't beat him until you learn how to box. That was the first time I was hearing boxing. He said, if I can box, yes. That's how he started. You will hear some things, sometimes not in your outer ear, but in your inner ear. Say, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. Oh, this is my father. Oh, this is my mother. It's in your heart. This is it. Don't be deaf to those things. Circumstances will shut you down, want to shut you down. The Bible says he cut out them all. This Christmas season, all the things you have seen, you have made up your mind, don't let circumstances shut you down. Are you hear what I'm trying to say? In that, that's why he came to Jericho, and that's why he left. He just came fleeting. It's a moment of time. It's not long. It's not one month. It's not three months. Just a brief moment. Just one day. Unfortunately, many people will just slip through it. They will not know it happened. And the Bible said, <laughs> Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. You know what that means? All those who were saying no, they will come under a command. 
All those who are not supporting you, they will come under a command. When they are commanded, you are not going to be begging them. They are not yet commanded. When the time is right, they show up, they will be willing to obey God. They will volunteer freely. Say amen, somebody. All the helpers God is sending our way, sending your way, when they show up, they will be under a command. When they are under a command, nobody can distract them. I don't struggle with people any longer. When they are under a command, they will respond to you. When they, that's what they call the time is ripe. And the time is ripe under three conditions. Recognize Jesus. Cry out to him. When they say don't cry, cry out louder. The time is ripe. <laughs> that's it. You don't need anything. When the time is ripe, just hear the voice of God. Recognize his passing by. And when you recognize it, cry out to him. And when people or circumstances say no, cry out more. Don't second guess yourself. Oh, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't cry. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't. No, 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 no. Cry out louder, for he will not forget you. And he stopped, and those people or those circumstances will be under a command. They will minister to you. That's what the Bible says. Kings shall be your nursing mothers. Kings and queens. They will come. They will beg you. They will serve you. It's, they will pave the door to your house. And be a blessing. And you will be a blessing to Africa. It's one thing we have not learned in Africa. When problem comes up, we keep quiet. I see almost every day to my chagrin, to my heartbreak, people making fun of Nigeria every day. Nigeria is going through a struggle, yes. But we have a future. Yes, we do have a future. I, I'm depending on what we have. I'm not looking at what we don't have. I'm depending on what we have. And you know what? He cast away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. Hallelujah. Cast out a garment. Cast out any garment that you can cast out. Cast them away. Garment of shame. Garment of self-condemnation. Oh, I've made so much mistakes. Put off all those garments. He can't do it for you. You have to do it. And if you don't cast them away, you'll be never able to receive. He's not asking to be perfect. He's asking to come. Come as you are. Let Christmas be a time you come as you are. He cast it off, came to Jesus, and Jesus answered. What will thou that I should do unto him? The blind man said unto him that I may receive my sight. Let me tell you something. When you finally go through all of that and come to the house of God, don't think you are going to give a red carpet reception. It may not happen. There will be a question to ask. Are you sure you want it? Are you sure you are ready for this? What do you want? I know you cried. I know you were blind. I know you heard. I know you shouted. But you are now in my presence. Are you ready for it? Many people at that point in time, they chicken out, they reverse, they are not going to do it. And Jesus said, go your way, your faith hath made the whole. Until that happened, immediately he said, immediately he received his sight. And what did he do when he received his sight? Give me that verse 52 as we close. What did he do? He followed Jesus in the way. So you are not been putting there Mark chapter 10. That we're reading. And then he did what? He followed Jesus. Some of us have gotten something this season. No doubt about it. Follow Jesus. Some of you are getting something tonight before the end of the year. Please follow Jesus. Make sure he's in front of you. You are following him. That was meant to follow Jesus. Our advert as I said, follow the star and be a star. Don't do like the wise men that missed it. You don't have time to miss it. You only have time to get it right. You will get it right in Jesus' name. Can we stand up on our feet, please? Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Rekindling hope. Your hope is rekindled Christmas. It's a time to rekindle hope. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we give you praise. We honor you. We adore you for you being good to us. Can we raise our hand and just receive the goodness of God? If you got anything tonight, it's a call, the grace of God. If you got anything, it's called the grace of God. What I can see in you is greatness. I can see restoration. 2024, 
God told us is a year of new things, a year of new things, new things, new things in God, new things in favor, new things in abundance, new things in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want to believe God for new things. You have seen some things in time past. You are about to see new things. Oh, new things, new level of power, authority, abundance, wealth, healing. It will happen for you. He will make all things new. He will make everything that is sick and diseased in your body. He will make them new in your family you will make them new. You will be amazed at what God will do. New things in your career. New things in your business. Why? Because that's why he came to Jericho. He has left Jericho but you are hearing him in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you thanks tonight. We give you praise. We give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Is there anyone here who wants to receive Jesus Christ? You have never received Jesus? Just like the wise men, they came and worshipped the baby, not Mary. It's not about Mary, it's about the baby. If you're here, can you raise your hand just for us to do it together? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's do it together, all of us, let's say it together. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you came and died for me. I confess with my mouth, you were raised from the dead to justify me. I receive you to my life now in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We are your children. Thank you, Father God, you will not cast us out. Thank you, Father God, you have received us. Thank you, Father God, for we are blessed. Thank you, Father God, for the blessing of Christmas. Our comfort is assured. Our hope is rekindled in you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And can we put our hands together for the Lord? And if God has blessed you tonight and you have the resources, you want to bless the kingdom, just give. The offering is doing two things. It's confirming your heart for God and it's also encouraging this work to go on. Because your offering goes to preach the gospel, to do all that we need for the gospel to be preached. That's what your offerings do. Amen. It goes to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. To put light on, to pay bills that we can see come here and preach. I will not have people harassing us. We can go out there and minister apostolic missions because we give offering because we respond to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The wise men gave by them, said nobody forced them. They just had opportunity and they responded. You also have opportunity. Just respond. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for blessing yours. Thank you for your children, those who have given now, those who will yet give later. Oh Lord, those who are transferring, we ask in the name of the Lord, you breathe upon every seed. Lord, breathe upon the storehouse. Lord, it will not be empty. Lord, whatever money is being expected by anyone, I open the door. I say there will be a flow in Jesus' name. And Lord, your children will not use their money to heal disease. They will not use it to cure disease or to repair damages. They will use their money to enjoy their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want you to mark Sunday. Sunday will be momentous. Something unusual will happen on Sunday. And I want you to believe it. Something unusual, maybe not expected. So get ready, get ready. Don't come alone. Don't come alone. Come with your family and friends and come happy. Come to Zion. Don't stay in Babylon. Hallelujah. And don't be tempted to go to Babylon. In Jesus' name. Let's give thanks to God as we close this meeting. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. As we go home, we ask that your blessing will abide on us. You will teach us by yourself. Thank you, precious Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. As we go home, we go in peace. We will meet again, either on phone, when we meet physically. Every one of us here will have a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.